It looks like it's time. Let's do what you came here for, okay? Are you ready to launch this channel? As long as someone shows me how to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Ah, 2009. What a year to be... <coughs> You've just come home from school. Sad. Angry. As mummy said no to going over to James's house. What the flip, mum? And in a desperate attempt to shut your bitch ass up, mum turns on the telly to ABC Kids. Never have I been more excited to wake up on Saturday mornings just to catch a new episode of Detention Air, Good Cave Spawn Point, Cannibals, Almost Naked Animals, and why the heck were there so many of these weird animal shows? But before we even go to all of these classics, we're gonna take a trip back to where this began. <laughs> ABC has been around for a while, since 1932 in fact, but fast forward to the year 1991, ABC for Kids was launched in hope of us not turning out to be drugs that go in old days around Westfield spending their Centrelink allowance. And damn, Daniel, ABC was gifting us with some goodies from the start. And if I wasn't jamming to Itsy Bitsy Spider, wiggling my hippies to some fruit and salad, I was sitting my ass down watching Thomas, the tank engine baby. But are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am, B2! Because Blinky Bill is coming over with his koala brothers to help my boy Fireman Sam to take out these generic TV shows. Get that trash out of here, man! ABC Kids was delivering these shows like Postman Pat, as I remember watching shows like Bob the Builder, 64 Zoom Lane, Adventures of Spot, Bear in the Big Blue House, Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wrong Bernard. Macy, Pingu, and of course, Bram. We could sit here all day as there are so many of these classic shows, but we have to move on to the golden age of ABC. Now, if you're like me where your parents couldn't afford Foxtel, then ABC3 provided that shit for free, man. We don't need no Foxtel. Woo, get out of here. While it does suck that I wasn't able to watch Drake and Josh and some of the other classics, but in return, I got something 10 times better. Oh yeah. You hear that? That's the sound of my childhood. Yeah, bangers like Charlie Lola, Curious George, Deadly Sixties, Five Minutes More, Let's Go Poyoko, Miffy and her friends, Yo Gabba Gabba, My Evil Goldfish, Luna Jim, Jaker's The Adventures of Piggly Wings, and Fifi the Flower Pot. And these were all made by Australia. What? What the fuck? Right, so after reading through a dozen of Wikipedia pages and surfing IMB, I've now realised that almost every show aired on ABC3 is either made by Canada or the UK. I mean, the only original shows we created were besides Bananas and Pajamas, Blinky Bill, or Figure Out Foe, which was just a show about an anorexic kid that probably suffers from schizophrenia. My point being, there are a fuck ton of shows. Some were okay, others were really fucking good. If you didn't fancy the friendly slower paced shows like Dirt Girl World, then bam, ABC3 got you covered with Slug Terror, man. Woo! Sick of seeing life with boys, and what to do? Octonauts are here! The amount of arguments I had with my sister about switching channels, with her being like, but, but Lazy Lucy is on! I'm like, no, I want to see some pixel face. Give me that damn remote! And then your mum comes running in, snatches that TV remote, and says those two cursed words, you're grounded, it would just be the worst week ever. The interesting thing that I discovered while researching this video, is that ABC3 had no dedicated commercials, making it the only free-to-air children's channel in Australia. So, why not fill that space up with a quirky program for young entertaining cast so that it can be more appealing for us kids? With a mix of audience interactions, celebrity interviews, and skits, form the iconic Studio 3. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, most of you either loved seeing this logo or absolutely despised it. But for the most part, I absolutely loved the personalities of our two main hosts, Ambo and the blonde legend himself, Kane, along with other notable cast members who do all these unique skits that will get them covered in cream, them dressed up as celebrities and as babies, I <laughs> don't know. However, these cast members bought some of the most memorable shows like Prank Patrol and the phrase, RELEASE THE NINJA! 
never gets old. But moving along, ABC3 had some spectacular specials like Australian Day Smackdowns where all the cast members would face off against each other with Kane losing his house every single time. Splatterlot, Bushwhacked, Whack, Little Lunch and Nowhere Boys were just some of the best shows I grew up watching. However, there was one show that stuck with me for life, and that is Good Game Spawn Point, the show for gamers and by gamers. Saturday mornings have never been better without the iconic trio Bajo, Hex, and Darren, where his name stands for Data Analyzing Robot for Ruthless Extermination of Noobs. The show kicks off by cracking that review of Trump 3000, where they explain what the game is about, things they liked about it, things they didn't oh, really like about interesting. it. Was it fun? Uh, not really. And eventually giving it a score based on X amount of rubber chickens. Then they run off into the iconic green screen room where they answer your questions. Uh, generally, 70% of the questions were gibberish that I legit <laughs> couldn't understand. 20% of the questions were just simple questions asking about a certain thing. But I mean, I don't know, Yahoo Answers can provide that for you. <laughs> and the other 10% were just consisted of just shitting on Darren and praising our goddess Hex. And finally, the show wraps up by giving one final review before ending on the note, may all your games be good ones. One thing I do find hilarious is how Darren evolved from this to this. I mean, talk about a glow up. So, ABC3 continued its domination by doing mini marathons, which was either the best day or the worst day. Time to switch over to WB Kids, am I right? No one else watched it beside, okay, well, of all the times where you stay up late and you watch a show called Rage, which was fun to watch at 2am sleepovers, and watching that We'll Be Back Tomorrow Morning loop, I will forever treasure those sweet, sweet times. But alas, we get to the dark ages of ABC3. I mean, ABC me, woohoo! But as soon as it rebranded to ABC me, like, that was just a nail in the coffin. Even before the rebrand, most of the original cast had already skedaddled. ABC3 was becoming a former show of what it once was before. They did bring in new hosts and some anime, like Prisoner Zero and some fairy one, but by that point it was already too late. Today, the network still broadcasts without the presenters, so uh, yeah. Hey, it's been a while since I've actually sat down and talked in front of a microphone, um, so yeah, I guess I gotta explain where I've been, but instead of doing that dog shit, uh, just expect me posting more, uh, got a new computer, the old one was completely fucked, uh, old Betsy's completely gone, uh, hope you guys stay safe. And yeah, Merry Christmas. And let's make 2022 a better year than before. Alright, that's enough. Um, this is, it's getting late. Alright, bye.